Hello world! I'm Jonathan and I'm starting this vlog to document my Masters of Architecture degree at University of Technology, Sydney. I completed my undergraduate at UNSW, but I transferred for my Masters for a few reasons which I will outline later in the video to force you to watch it. I'm commencing this documentary in the hopes that future prospective students see either a confirmatory, insightful, or even perhaps disillusioning reality that students face when they partake in this course. I'm going to try to be as brutally honest as possible about my past and continuing experiences, which include the experiences taken on campus. That might be to do with architecture or it may be more social. I guess we'll find out. I'm not even sure if I will be heading to campus. By the looks of it, it might not happen, which would be most unfortunate. I'll have you know early on, I'm naturally a skepticist and a pessimist. I tend to lean closer to practical designs because I consider the construction costs and labor time. Therefore, I might lean towards prefabricated pre construction methods above traditional, because in Sydney, Australia, construction costs are probably up there with the highest in the world. And in some cases, if you're a property investor, it may not make sense to build a house in Sydney. As opposed to the sky-high daydreamer, presumed necessary to get an HD, you can actually take it the other route and question what you're given and be rewarded for it. So long as you're not too much of an asshole about it, it should be okay and, and you can't be cocky, but sometimes architects need to be. Otherwise, who's gonna trust you? Who's gonna trust that your design can be built and will work and won't mess up? That's something I don't have to worry about for another two years, thankfully. And hopefully by the time I finish my master's degree, I will be prepared. Which many students actually say they don't feel they are after a master's, at least 50%. But I guess I'll find out. What I've done to offset that concern is actually take a year off of university between my undergraduate and my master's for full-time work with an architectural firm. And I'm very, very thankful I have because I have learned more in the last year than I had in the four years of my undergraduate of architecture and my year of interior architecture before I transferred to architecture. So if that gets confusing, I kind of went backwards there. Finished my undergraduate. That's looking good. I did okay. I think I'm happy with it. Uh, but looking into the future, I really have no clue what, will, what I'll be doing because my university is yet to release a course guideline or outline that isn't a copy paste of the generic outline, you know, the kind of thing that goes, students are expected to work together in a group. Well, thank you, I, I didn't know that. I'm by no means an exemplary student. I've attained passes and HDs for some courses, but there's a gen general mix and, and you learn as you become an architectural student you'll know what you enjoy and what your strengths and weaknesses are, and then you improve on the weaknesses or you improve on the strengths. You don't have to be perfect at everything. You just need to keep improving, and that's what matters. I mentioned earlier, unless this is the wrong take, because I've done a few, I'm quite... It, it's strange what you're looking at a camera and seeing myself. It makes me uncomfortable as I speak. The University of New South Wales, which I went into, my first and second year were actually incredibly wonderful because we had semesters and I think the year after that, but things went downhill very quickly because what I've been seeing more and more of is students in my position right now, and this might not be the best pitch to follow my vlog, but it, I guess it's unassociated, but I began noticing more qualified trainers disappear and be replaced with students in my position. Fourth year, probably looking for a job but can't find one. And what do they do? They, they start to teach first and second years as though they know the world of architecture. How hard you push yourself is entirely up to you. It's not up to your teachers. And basically the university model in architecture is still, here's the work, you go do it. You know, it, it's not, here's what you have to do and here's how we want you to do it. They're not gonna do that. They'll give you an outline, which you always have to read. You always have to read the guideline because they're not gonna mark it outside. 
there, there usually are a few teachers who have their biases and styles and you don't have to play to that. What's most important is you get the most out of your course that you possibly can and you don't have to fit somebody else's criteria to do that. So ask yourself, what are you interested in and where do you wanna go? I found there was some major courses that you can't escape and they, I found them kind of boring and uninteresting but other people love them so they did well. I didn't do well, but guess what? I'm not gonna be writing about Australia's federation houses when I'm a practicing architect, so that's okay. But what I did do well in theory right wise was criticizing where modern architecture is and how it was developed. So uh, perhaps I'll, I'll give an exper a, a demonstration of that later. So if, if you guys are interested in seeing my, my past works, I'll be very delighted to share that and go over my thoughts and probably criticize myself because at the time I, I felt like I was hot shit, but possibly I'd look back and say, oh, that could use a lot of improving. But that's the point, this is a learning process. Nobody starts at their peak. It's just not possible. So go and have fun, give it your best. What I found at UNSW is they swapped to a trimester system, which reduced the amount of hours you got in teaching, but also the amount of time you could put into a project. Here's a different, a different perspective. You've probably heard it, but it's good to reiterate. Architects and architecture students are expected to work their butts off to the point that they don't have an exterior life. Why? It's just insane. Work smart, not hard. You can do both, but you'll, you won't live if you do both. So just find the most productive, efficient way. Pretend you're a business. Why would you put 20 hours into drawing a, a pretty picture when you can do it in half an hour, relay the same information, and cut down your costs? Makes perfect sense to me. There's this persistence and expectation that who gets the least sleep, who works the most hours, is the most devoted student. I disagree. To be honest, I didn't even read most of the books that they gave us. Huge waste of money. They're sitting in my room. The, the ones that are the most important are the books about construction and the construction codes in your country. Because if you don't understand what's allowed and what's not, and you put up a design with the wrong building codes and standards, it's gonna get rejected and you're gonna, you're gonna waste a lot of time and effort. So that's probably a good place to start. But first year, don't even bother worrying about that. First year is about ideas generating and thinking of the best ways to, to challenge human nature, really. It's all about human nature and the experience. So think about your experiences and push them to the extreme. Then you develop on them and you gather a, a good way to explain them. But where I feel my degree lacked and probably will still lack is our ability to public speak, which has not really been pushed upon at all. Um, it, it's hard to get into this without being shamed for speaking my mind. The course is being dumbed down. I won't get into it, but you'll see what I mean if you start. It's being dumbed down and it's a good opportunity for people who are good at speaking and perhaps bullshitting. That reminds me, that's a term which I'm probably gonna be bringing up a lot. I've been calling up most of my previous four years architecture bullshit because most of the things people say is bullshit. It's comparing scientific terms with construction and architecture and to convolute the two gets dangerous and just a little bit unrealistic. It's good to have big ideas, but you can't get too carried away. You have to bring it back into a way that responds to the human nature and how we want to live. Not what you think people should do, but how do they live now? How might they want to live in the future? And where my course failed was it missed the most important element of all. It missed the clients. Without a client, you don't have someone telling you, well, this is what you actually need and want. You might get a brief that says you need a cinema, you need two bedrooms, a bathroom, a kitchen, a pool, you know, but it's not the same as, as a client looking over your shoulder and, and questioning, well, what's really necessary or I'm on a budget. 
And I have a feeling my master's degree will offer that budget element. And I think that will bring a lot of people and even myself closer to earth. Another reason I swapped university degrees is the simple reason of student debt. Why be charged three times more in a profession that isn't, isn't really expected to return even half of what these people make. So it, it's just something to consider. So I swapped universities because it looked like UTS is focused more on real world applications and technology and less theory. But more importantly to me, I'm seeing it as an investment for the same architectural bullshit, you know, so I'm not going in expecting everything to be heavenly and wonderful. I'm just going in knowing I'm getting better value for my money. I can't believe I almost forgot to include this point. Another thing you're going to hear a lot of is don't expect money. Don't do architecture for money. Well, that's like saying don't do anything for a living. I don't see why anyone would bother taking a job if they don't expect to pay. Mind you, in Australia, we do have a minimum wage. That's what I'm making right now. And I can't complain because I'm covering my costs by living with my family. So I'm very happy to, to have this lifestyle. But if someone in a profession is going to tell you to expect the norm to be underpaid, well, that's illegal. And find someone who else is willing to pay the fair wage. I remember we had this one lecturer and every week, Without fail, he made sure to remind us, by the way, expect a low wage. What, why are you still here if you, if you think you're going to make money? Well, funny question. Look up the average wage of an architect, a licensed architect. You've got nothing to worry about. You just do your job. Do your job, you'll be fine. It depends who and where you work with, but that's something that I'm not qualified to talk about. My general assessment is that there's a sweet spot. It's hard to be picky when there are barely any choices to be made. I remember searching for about a year trying to find a job and eventually I gave up but luckily the last place I had an interview with took me up because they saw my potential. I had no idea what was coming and I really feel for people who struggle because the industry is super tight. It's hard to make money in architecture and it's hard to justify fees when a builder can do the same job. The difference between builders putting up houses and architects is that architects have the expertise and knowledge to make a house that works and what will stand the test of time and fit your budget and hopefully look really nice too. If you found any of these topics interesting, please let me know and I'll be happy to go into further detail or really specific issues which I haven't gone into here because I'm, I'm just I'm trying to get a feel for this and I'm trying to talk in a camera and it feels very unnatural to me right now so hopefully this is something that can be extended upon anyway I'm going to be filming my experiences and hopefully hopefully this turns into something beautiful thank you for watching I really really appreciate it till next time